This is a video of how to use the PU28 controller with the Autoterm diesel heater on the Freedom Package RV. So this is the picture of the controller. I'm going to tap it and I'm going to open up the screen. The irony of this video, actually the funny part, is that this is the American Coach Patriot with the Freedom Package. And this controller is made by the Russians. You cannot make that story up. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this controller exactly how we use it. There are lots of ways to use this. This is how we use it, and we do a lot of our RVing. Um, the last time I checked, right at the end of the Texas rally, we owned our RV for 458 days, and we've been in the RV camping for 150, so I'm pretty good at this. And this has worked for us down to about 28 degrees Fahrenheit last winter. So this is the opening screen. You've got the snowflake. What the snowflake really means is um, you're on standby. First, I'm going to show you how to set it up. Up here, the little wrench, I'm gonna press that. There are three choices. I'm not going to choose panel or external sensor. I'm gonna choose power. The external sensor doesn't work and I don't like the way the panel sensor works either. I choose power. What this means is that the, the controller will operate as long as this uh, controller itself, the PU28, has power. I'm going to click on the arrow, and this is work time. This is how long the heater is going to be on. I'm choosing zero days, zero hours, and only 10 minutes. Now, you can see you can kind of move this up as you go. I chose the very bottom, and you can swipe this also. The minimum is 10 minutes. If you choose unlimited, it will run until you turn it off. I'm going to show you later on why I've chosen 10 minutes. In short, when we're boondocking before we go to bed, we'll turn this on for 10 minutes. And then at 2 or 3 in the morning when we wake up a little chilled, all we have to do is come in and press that opening screen. It'll fire itself up for 10 more minutes. And then uh, right when we wake up, I'll hit it again to turn it on for 10 minutes. It does two things. Number one, I personally just don't like anything working for unlimited usage. The second thing is it is using diesel. Diesel's pretty expensive, so I don't need it. Uh, and then third, I just don't like the idea of running anything unlimited. And the truth is this, this uh, heater is so strong um, that it will, it'll, it'll, it'll kick you out of the RV. It's so strong and warm that you will be blown out of the RV with uh, heat. So that's my first screen. I'm gonna hit this arrow again. Next, system. So I want ventilation on standby. What this means is I'm not drawing in air from the outside. When I'm using the heater, I don't draw in more cold air. Fahrenheit and the 12 hour clock, these don't mean anything. The only thing you really check on here is the ventilation on, the, on, on standby so you're not drawing in outside air. Next is your heater info system, no big deal. Next is your language, you want English. So again, there's your brightness, your power sensor, 10 minutes in my example, ventilation, etc. Now when I'm finished, I'm gonna click over here this little file system, and I'm gonna go back to the basic screen. Now, as you can see, this goes from one to 10, and you can put your finger on here and kind of drag it around. We like eight. Eight is just fan speed, frankly, on how hard you want it to get hot. Since I've sent it for only 10 minutes, I want pretty hot air, and I want a lot of it quickly. As you know, and I'll show you in a second, the auto term heater's heat comes from underneath the bed. It's a great idea. Why? Because heat rises, and therefore when you're sleeping, you turn it on and that heat comes right under your bed and takes the chill um, off of you. So let's say now we're ready to go, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click the snowflake. When it does, you're gonna see an hourglass. What happens is when you start the auto term heater, it goes through a systems, a series of checks. Um, since it's a diesel heater, it has to make sure that your, uh, the diesel is purging, it's filling up a small chamber, and you've got good airflow. And so it takes about a minute, but I'm going to click it now, and then we're going to walk through this entire uh, process. This will be a 12-minute video because we're going to have to wait for the 10 minutes. I'm going to try to edit it down, but if I can't, uh, that's what you're going to see. So now I've set from this control ahead of time what we're doing. I'm going to click this, click on the snowflake, and you're going to see that I caught cup of coffee. So right now it's going to run through its checks. Okay, if you can bring it down here. Oh, uh, uh, good point. So I bring this up to the heat. Thanks, Kate. And I'm going to rank, crank this up to uh, 
eight. That's how, in other words, I'm gonna have hot heat. Let's move down here. So down here is the vent, which really important is over here. This is your carbon monoxide reader. So what's really smart about this process is the reader that tells if you got carbon monoxide is right beside where the hot air is coming out. The good news about this heater is that all the combustion, the heat generation is on the outside. So the only thing that should be coming through this vent is warm air with no carbon monoxide. So let's go ahead and take a look. So right now I'm at 85 degrees. It was colder. I just went through this ahead of time. So it was about 70, but right now preheat it's at 84 degrees. I'm going to feel down here and I can feel very lightly just a little bit of air coming out of this thing. And that's just because it's starting to verify what's going on in the heater. So now we're gonna wait until this thing turns on and it's gonna take about a minute and a half. Again, I'm going to try to um, uh, edit this out if I can. I'm sorry, just fast forward for about a minute until it goes through its internal checks. I don't think you can hear over here noise. The heater is up here and Right now, I can hear the small, very light mechanical process. And if you go down here, uh, if you can get, let me put my headset off so you can hear this. Hopefully, you can, 